All right, y'all, so it's time to go in and ta 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 ta. Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name's JJ, and in today's episode, I want to talk about the game room. Now, I've been gone for quite some time because I had a few life changes in my life, and one of those changes included moving into a new place. And my new place allows me to have my own um, you know, room for my work, uh, YouTube videos, and gaming. Before, in my previous place, I was kind of having to share my game room and all that stuff within my bedroom. I was in a share house, but now I'm in a proper apartment, so I am blessed to have more space. And because I'm setting the room up, I wanted to share all of this with you in hopes that it might provide ideas for all of you. And I guess, you know, one of the things that I like to do, like most normal people, is kind of take a look at the room and kind of get a feel for it and see, kind of imagine, you know, where I'm going to place what. Um, and I think I have more or less an idea of you know, how I want to set the room up. But the reason why I haven't brought anything in yet is because if you take a listen, the room has a bit of an echo and I want to kind of get rid of that because the room's acoustics play a huge role in sound quality and you know, you could have super expensive gear but if the room's acoustics are pretty bad, it's going to be the bottleneck for your system. And you know, listening to music, hearing that sweet gaming music is important for me. So that's definitely the first thing that I want to tackle. And one of the things that I, one of the solutions that I, you know, that I found online and just through my own research is putting up soundproofing material like these, uh, like these foam pads. Now these foam pads are widely available. You know, I ordered mine from Amazon, and essentially what I'm going to do. I'm just going to be sticking them up on the wall and then from there kind of seeing how the, the room's acoustics improve. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start with this and then after that we'll start bringing in all the gear. So let's get to it. They kind of have a, a little bit of a chemical odor to them. Kind of like, I don't know, like a freshly, like fresh paint, like a fresh coat of paint is kind of what they smell like. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start sticking them. Okay, y'all, so moment of truth. Um, took a little bit longer than I expected, but you know, we don't want to rush such things. But I have all the mounting up and let's go ahead and take a look. So as you can see there, that's more or less aligning to where the speakers are gonna be. Then we'll flip around here. Now, these three, I'm probably gonna rearrange. Not really feeling that. But then I have uh, those and those. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring the, the audio AV rack in with a few components and the speakers. So let's go ahead and bring that in and see how that looks. Okay guys, so it's finally time to take a look at the game room. I've been working on it for the last few days and I'm pretty happy with the results that I have thus far. Keep in mind that I am awaiting on a few pieces of furniture, but the final room layout is all set. But anyhow, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look inside. All right, y'all, so it's time to go in. And ta 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 da So this is it. So this is it, this is the game room. I'm super happy with the work that I've put into this room. Um, I guess we can start here with the main area of the, ga of the game, the game room. Um, as you can see, I got the foam up, got some house plants to kind of clean up the air and break up the electronic vibe. Got the sound system up and running, got my component rack, and I guess we can start here. Um, at the very bottom, I have a Sansui SMC 500BT valve amplifier. And this, uh, this amplifier pretty much gives me all the connections I could want. Um, has a phono, CD, auxiliary, Bluetooth, you know, everything that I could uh, ask for. And it's pretty much taking the sweet sounds of retro gaming goodness 
and spinning them out to these JBL 4312 um, M2 speakers. Now these, these speakers definitely lend to the retro vibe that I'm going after. They lack a little bit in the bass. Um, they got a little bit of a thump. Um, I wish they had a little bit more, but overall I am satisfied with them. But let's go ahead and keep the show, keep the show moving here. Um, as you can see, I have three consoles here. Let me up the brightness. Uh, wrong way. Ah, there we go. I got a Super Famicom there, a PlayStation 1, and a PlayStation 2. Then up above that, I got a Victor Saturn, and, and the Victor Saturn is currently running. It's running um, Thunder Force Gold Pack 2, Thunder Force 4 to be exact. And then I have a Sega Dreamcast. Now with these, uh, with these consoles, with the exception of the Victor Saturn, I picked them all up um, at Hard Off. I salvaged them from the junk bins. I think the most expensive was the Sega Dreamcast at $9. The PS2 and Super Famicom were about $4.90. And the PlayStation 1 was 90 cents. Crazy, crazy local deal. But uh, super happy with those pickups. And pretty much there, you know, uh, pushing out the visual information to this 14 inch Sony PVM. Now this is a professional video monitor and I ended up getting it for free a few months back. There was a dude that posted the TV um, online. I sent him a message and he just told me to come on by and I picked it up so yeah, he hooked me up big time. But super happy with, the, super happy with this TV. And I guess uh, that's that area of uh, the game room but I guess we can take a closer look at some of my decor. Um, I have a Zangief here in victory pose. I have M. Bison, Vega, or Dictator doing a Psycho Crusher. Then up over here, let me go ahead and lower the uh, brightness so we can get a better, better look. I have Akira of Virtual Fighter fame. And he has a funny pose because he fell over. I'm not sure how, maybe the wind or something. And that's kind of how he landed. And then I, I placed a Beavis and Butthead on there. Next to him, we have Shin Godzilla. And this dude has a super long tail. Let me see, not sure if it'll focus, but it's uh, super long, nice, detailed. Super happy with that figure. And then next to Godzilla is Wolverine of X-Men fame. I'm a fan of the the early and mid 90s uh, comic books. So I definitely wanted to add some Marvel, a little bit of Marvel goodness. But yeah, this is this area, super happy with it. And those foam pads definitely helped uh, improve the sound acoustics of the room. Now over here, we have uh, a wall that's mostly uh, empty and I wanna add a few posters. Not sure what I'm gonna add yet, but uh, what I do have up is, let me adjust the brightness again, this Oni mask, hand carved. I like to collect masks. I have a few in the States. Um, but what I have here in Japan is just these two. This one is a little bit more menacing, a little bit more sinister. But I'm hoping I can get my masks shipped and get them up on the wall. Then over here, we have my desk. Um, I added this little, this little uh, wire net so that I could hang headphones and a few other things. But yeah, let's take a closer look. Um, I guess for starters, we have all my handhelds. Got a PlayStation Vita, a new 3DS, a DS Lite, and a Game Boy Color. Um, I have the game on display here that's currently running, which is uh, Thunder Force Gold Pack 2. Got my Nintendo Switch here. Um, this little drawer thingy, Maji, has a, a PlayStation Vita TV as well as some memory cards and some loose uh, handheld games. Then over here on my Bluetooth speaker, I have a few uh, capsule toys and a few miniature uh, gaming consoles there. But yeah, this is, uh, this is the desk. 
running Mortal Kombat there. Um, let me move the chair out of the way. And as you can see, I have my PC there. I have, uh, let me aim the light. Got a PS3 that's currently running. It's running uh, the Mortal Kombat uh, collection and then a PS4 back there. Dan over here, I have my toolbox and a couple containers that hold uh, chargers for the handheld systems, uh, cables for the PS4 and 3. And then there's another one back there you can't see that has just a bunch of, uh, a bunch of, what you might call it, um, audio video cables. And got some more foam pads up. And then here I have my tissue box, kind of a funky, funky looking box. And then that's resting on my uh, dry cabinet. Now the dry cabinet has all my photographic lenses and camera bodies. It's super humid in Japan. In fact, it's humid and hot in this room right now. I had to turn off the air conditioning just because it kind of gets in the way of the audio. But yeah, I definitely needed something to protect uh, my precious lenses. And then I guess uh, over here, let me move the chair out of the way. We have the closet space. Now, over here, I got a couple of uh, magazines, mostly like photographic magazines. Um, got some boxes, got a couple of steering wheels, which I'll hopefully review. Here, just got a little shoe, uh, shoe thing that I use uh, to hold chargers, gloves, little bags, just, you know, cases for my handhelds. Um, Got some extra, what you might call it, uh, photographic equipment. Got a display case here. And pretty much what I hold here are my music CDs as well as uh, games that I'm gonna be uh, selling off just because they're incomplete or doubles. Then below that, I have some containers for my consoles that hold like controllers and cables and whatnot. I like to keep them separated. Got a Super Famicom. Switch, Dreamcast, Saturn, PS2, and PS1. And I like to keep those, like I said, separated just so they're clean. Over here, I got a few controllers. Got some 8-bit uh, do Bluetooth controllers. Some fight sticks for the Saturn PS1. Here is my Laserdisc collection. And I have currently one VHS. Down below, I have my light guns, another controller by Sunsoft, um, and two um, arcade sticks, with the bottom one being a Mayflash, and that pretty much supports all my modern consoles, including my phones and the PlayStation Vita TV. Over here, it's just a bunch of random little things, uh, some spare consoles and just kind of like loose parts. And then finally, we have my video game cabinet. Now let me get some light on here. Let me uh, adjust the light. Anyhow, <laughs> technical difficulties, but this is the uh, video game cabinet. Up at the top, I have my capsule toys. Now this collection spans about three years, pretty much a uh, full. These items back here, these larger items, I actually got at the Tokyo Game Show. Now this is a little socket cup and uh, it's an e-tank from the Mega Man series and it's pretty much meant for holding a uh, socket. But this cabinet has a tinted, uh, has tinted glass. I wanted to protect my games from UV light. Don't want them to sun fade because I do a lot of buying and selling and I want to get, um, just protect the games just so I, when I do do that, I get maximum value. But in here, on the top shelf, I have my Sega Saturn games, PS1 and Sega Dreamcast. Then we have PS2 and PS3. And then down below that, we have some Switch and Super Famicom, as well as uh, DS games, loose. Then I can open this up. I've got a little bit more. Got some Sega Saturn games, Switch, PS4, PS1, Super Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. PlayStation Vita. So this cabinet is pretty much full. Um, I have a few more games in the States and I somehow I want to get them over here but I'll have to figure that whole thing out. But for the time being this is what I have. 
I don't know if I really want to add any more at the moment, but uh, this is what I have. And yeah, this is pretty much the game room. Um, like I said, I'm pretty happy with the results, uh, especially this area. But anyhow, what I'm gonna do, let me go ahead and place the camera on the tripod, and then we'll go ahead and close the video out. Alright guys, so we're pretty much at the end of the video. If you've stuck around for this long, I want to give you a big thank you. Um, the whole process of setting up this room was over a month long. As you saw when I initially entered the game room, I originally had it in a different orientation, but I decided to switch it up because the room runs uh, long when it's facing the window, and I think that's better overall for the room acoustics. But yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with the results and I hope some of the ideas that I laid forth in this video will inspire all of you if you're in the process of kind of setting up your own game room or thinking about renovating your gaming spaces. And perhaps some of the ideas that I presented, you know, you can improve upon. And if so, please leave a comment down below and we can get a dialogue going. But anyhow, now that the game room is complete, I hope to be producing um, videos on a more regular schedule and more frequently. But anyhow, um, thank you again for checking out Retro Rewire. My name is JJ and we'll see you all very soon. Ciao. this video um, no but once you're all done you know you definitely mm, hope that some of the ideas that I laid forth I don't know if I said that higher frequency uh,